Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I have this Betsy Baby Boomer Poly Gel Kit. I did already review this kit, but I did a second set, so I want to go ahead and show you guys this set. I did do my unboxing in my previous video, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys just again if you guys didn't watch my previous video. So this is how the box looks. Up first, we have um, our instruction menu. And so when we open it up, we do get three different methods on how to do our poly gel nails. One being dual forms, the other one is full cover coffin tips, which is the Femme Beauty method, and forms. I did do the forms in my previous video, so you want to check that out, make sure you do. It also gives you instructions on how to prep and some warm tips. Next, here I'm going ahead and just showing you the packaging and showing this cute um, heart bubble wrap, which I thought was such a really cute uh, like thing. And so when we open it up, this is all of the stuff that includes, it includes so much stuff. And so I'm going to go ahead and just remove all of the poly gels first out of the way. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and show you this watch and after I finish showing you guys what's inside the box. So up first, we have four nail stickers. These are some leopard paint, pink and brown. Some butterfly stickers. Here are some roses. They come in black and white. Here we have eight milliliters of their top and base coat. 30 milliliters of their slip solution. A 100 times 80 grit file, horseshoe paper forms or forms. Here are the full coverage coffin nail tips. 100 pieces are included, as you guys can see right here. I'm gonna go ahead and open them up and then show you guys how they look. This is how they look, and this is how they look. And they are ABS, which are plastic. This is great for the family beauty method. I have not tried it, but if you guys like that method, they do include that, which is such a great thing. Here they have dual forms as well. They also do include 100 pieces. I really like these. They don't seem flimsy. They actually seem pretty sturdy and thick, which is great. This is how they look. They don't have a much of a strong curve, which is also great and I like. Here they also do include some matte black scissors. I mean tweezers, I apologize. So yeah, this is how they look. Great for the stickers. Here we have some cherry oil, cherry cuticle oil for our cuticles, you know, to rehydrate them and keep our nails healthy. And I opened it up and this is how it looks. So here we have some ABS rhinestones, super pretty and we also have them in silver. Here you guys can see how shiny they are, they're really great quality. And here we have a few mylar and the ones at the bottom here, I actually don't know what they are. But yeah, it honestly looks really pretty. And here we have this clip. And this clip is great for when you're doing your poly gel nails with dual forms. It helps keep the poly gel in place and the form in place when you're carrying. Here's some pixie beads. Super pretty. And lastly, we have six pack of um, chunky and fine glitters. These did come open. As you guys can see, a lot of the glitter is spilled everywhere. Mainly the fine glitter got out of the box. And a lot of the glitters did come um, opened, as I mentioned in my previous video, and you guys can see here, they just spill everywhere. And so here are the eight poly gel colors that we have. This is how they all look side by side, and they're all 15 milliliters each. So I'm going to go ahead and just watch the colors. This is a very bright color, very bright white. Here we have their clear, a bubblegum pink color. This is more like a peachy orange tone. Here's their nude, which is actually my favorite. This brown color, this silvery poly gel color, and lastly, this iridescent clear color. Super pretty. That one's probably also my other favorite. And here's how the colors look all side by side. And once they've been cured, this is how they all look. I did have a problem with the clear, and I will mention that later on. Okay, and so here I'm going ahead and just basically showing you my nail tips on. I'm using some Savlan C Curve Coffin Tips and this is how they look. I went ahead and already buffed them to my natural nail and we're ready to start on our application. Here's how the C Curve looks and next I'm going to go in with the Betsy Base Coat and I'm just going to apply a very thin layer onto my natural nail only and then I'm going to go ahead and make cure for 60 seconds. Ok, 
Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and cure this for 90 seconds. After it's cured, I'm gonna go in with the color PL15, which is the nude color here. This color in particular is very much on the firmer side because this is very firm and stiff, which I honestly have no problem with that. I actually absolutely love that. I feel like it's way easier to work when it's stiffer and firmer. I just love it. I think it's way easier to also move around. You do need to add a little bit more pressure to your brush, I will say that. But like I said, I feel like overall it's really easier to work with this sort of poly gel consistency rather than the softer. I've always preferred firmer poly gel. I don't know if you guys know. I do want to mention though that all of the poly gels are different consistencies. They are not the same. Some are more softer, some are more on the runny sides, and just like so. For example, this color that I'm using here, like I said, is more firmer. The glitter ones are more on the runny side. And they can get a little bit too sticky, so you do have to use a little bit more alcohol with that. I did notice that. They're pink colors, and they're, and they're, the rest of them are actually more on the softer side. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed all of their poly gels. I think they're great quality, and they're very easy to use. I had no problem with them at all. Um, but I also do want to let you guys know in advance, if you guys are hearing that fire alarm that needs to change their batteries. I'm not. I'm at my house right now. I'm currently, I got a last minute call to babysit while I was doing my sister's nails. So yeah, that is, I'm not at my house right now. But here I showed you guys the nail, the thumb, after. And here I'm going in and placing it a little bit. You guys can see it doesn't move around. It just, you know, stays stiff like this. That's when you notice that, you know, this quality gel consistency is more firmer. But here I'm pushing it upward towards the cuticle area. Now here I'm pushing it towards the left side wall. And I also did push it towards the right side wall if you guys didn't notice. Now I'm going ahead and grabbing my brush and pushing it upward towards the free edge because I'm going ahead and be using that excess poly gel. To go ahead and create that French V cut, if that makes any sense. And to create that French V cut, I used the metal part of my poly gel brush to go ahead and just, you know, try to make that V cut very nice and crisp. Most of the time, I do not like to go in and file. It's something that I try my best to prevent. But sometimes it does not come out perfect. Like I think this time I didn't really like the French V cut. I felt like it didn't come out perfect on one side. But either ways, like I said, I try to get better at it. I try my best to, you know. Do the less minimal filing as possible but yeah i'm just going ahead and just fixing that up to my liking i did have a bubble there earlier that you guys saw me use my tweezers to go ahead and pop um but yeah i'm going ahead just patting this into place once i have it down i went ahead and then cure for about 60 seconds here i'm going in with the color pl02 this is just a white color you guys can see that the consistency is a bit softer um, but yeah, I'm just going ahead and just filling those gaps that I had there to create my French V cut. Just going ahead and just patting that into place. Once I have that down, I'm going to go ahead and then cure for 60 seconds. Also, I'm removing that excess as well by bringing it upwards towards the free edge. Then using my brush to go ahead and take that off and remove it and then place it in it onto the right side of the nail. Here I'm using the color GL11, which is a beautiful glitter iridescent poly gel color, which is probably one of my favorites, like I said. So here you guys can see this one's a little bit more sticky and on, on the runier side, so I did have to go ahead and use a little bit more alcohol than usual. And I'm just going ahead and patting this down and creating a very thin layer because we are going to go ahead and encapsulate. I like to create a very thin layer because I don't like the nails to become too bulky as well. So yeah, I'm just going ahead and patting down the entire nail, making sure that I fully cut the entire nail with this beautiful um, glitter poly gel color. Now, since we are going to go ahead and encapsulate, I am going to be using the poly gel itself as an adhesive for the stuff that I am going to go ahead and be encapsulating. So once I have my application down, then I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as it is. Like I said, I'm not going to cure. And so the things that I'm going to be encapsulating are these beautiful flowers, butterflies, and these tiny little tiny flowers. So at first, I went in with this golden butterfly. I went ahead and used my dotting to place it down. I'm also going ahead and do, um, placing these red flowers. I'm placing the big ones, the cherry. I think these are cherry flowers. I'm not too sure. 
I'm just placing two pink ones and then I'm placing these little tiny yellow ones here just around the entire nail. Once I have my placement down for these, I'm gonna go ahead and cure for 60 seconds. Lastly, once I have my placement down of my dry flowers and the rest of the stuff, I'm going with the color PL05, which is the clear one. And I'm going ahead and patting this into place to create my apex and also to encapsulate the entire nail, making sure that I fully coat all of my butterfly, my flowers, and all that good stuff. Like I said previously, I did have a problem with the clear. The clear um, does not cure with at least 30, 60 seconds or a minute. It wasn't my lamp because if it were happening, had been my lamp the problem then the rest of the polish gels wouldn't have cured you know so i noticed that my lamp wasn't the issue the lamp was just the polish gel itself um but it does cure it just takes around 15 to 20 minutes depending on the water of your lamp i believe i didn't think anybody else had this issue but if you guys had this issue please let me know i did watch other people's reviews on this kit as well um but nobody seemed to mention anything but yeah i did have that problem like I said, it's not too much of a big problem because it does cure, it just takes quite a lot longer than usual. Um, for reference, the lamp that I am using is a 48 watt lamp, um, but yeah, that's basically it. Now next here, I'm going in, in doing that baby bloomer design, or also known as an ombre. And I'm going ahead and just adding some of that white at the free edge and then some of that pink color PL15 at the cuticle area. And it's going ahead and dragging this towards the middle of the nail. Right where it touches my natural nail and right where I kind of want my blend to be. Then I'm pushing the white upwards towards the um, middle of the nail as well. When doing the ombre, it is quite easier to do the ombre with a softer poly gel. I noticed that. So when we're doing softer poly gel, it just becomes so much easier. But when you're working with the firmer poly gel, like I said, the PO50 color, which is the nude color, is more on the firmer side. The white color is more on the softer side, so it was a little bit more easier to do the, tra to do the transition when working with two colors that are um, softer. So I did have a little bit of an issue with that, but it wasn't too much. I think I actually kind of executed it correctly. Let me know what you guys think about this ombre transition. I think it, I didn't do too bad. It kind of was a little bit of a pass off first because I had never done an ombre design with firmer poly gel, but I kind of really wanted to do it since this um, kit is called the Baby Boomer Kit. So I wanted to really try and do the ombre um, design on this now. But basically, Best way I can explain to do this um, ombre. I do have a step by step tutorial, but I did use softer poly gels. But now I'm gonna go ahead and explain here how to work it with sperm and poly gels. Basically, just do your first layer just like so. It doesn't really matter how it looks. Just do your first layer down and drag it. And I mean, drag it a lot and add a lot of alcohol and a lot of pressure to your brush with the firm poly gel, bringing it downwards towards the free edge, which is bringing that um, here. I don't know if you can tell. But I'm adding a lot of pressure and a lot of alcohol to my brush, brush, and I'm basically dragging that firmer poly gel downwards towards into the white. Like I'm honestly dragging a lot of it downwards, and I'm also noticed that I actually removed a lot of that white poly gel. But that is the best way I can explain that I was able to achieve this ombre effect using the firmer poly gel. So after my first layer, I went ahead and cured that and I, again, I'm going in with that white again. And this time I'm only going to go in with white first. And I'm going ahead and placing this upwards and gently brushing it upwards towards the pink first. Like I said, that previous one has already been cured. And so yeah, I'm just dragging that upwards towards the pink um, or towards my cuticle. You can also say that. That's basically all I'm doing first. And I did kind of not speed this up too much because I kind of wanted to explain this design in particular. But yeah, I'm just gently dragging that upwards just like so. Once I have that to my liking, then I'm going to go in and add some of that um, nude color. I added not too much here as you guys can see. And again, I'm patting this down. I do have to add a little bit more pressure to my brush since it is from a poly gel. And then I'm dragging that nude color downwards into the pink and I mean I'm literally dragging it like I'm pulling it downwards towards the free edge to create that great transition because like I said it's firmer so it does take a little bit more work to do and I'm using a lot of pressure onto my brush a lot of alcohol and I'm just dragging it down once I have that done then I'm gonna go to then care for 60 seconds I'm also removing the excess that you guys saw there and I'm gonna go ahead and continue dragging it more until I feel like I have the best transition that I can possibly get 
So here's how it looks. I felt like that pink was a little bit too translucent. So again, I'm going in with another layer. Again, I'm grabbing that white first, dragging it upwards towards the pink, just like so. And we're just basically gonna do the, the exact same design like I showed you guys previously and I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys do this part because I feel like I've been talking for too long but anywho make sure you let me know down in the comment section your thoughts so far about this video and about the scent Lastly, I'm going in with that PL02, which is the white color. I'm going ahead and just making sure that the whole entire nail is just in white. Just like so. I'm just patting this into place. And then lastly, I'm going to go ahead and then cure for 60 seconds. Okay, and this is how my application looks. So for today's video, I actually wanted to go ahead and work more on my shaping. So hopefully you guys can see some improvement here. Well, I didn't really work on my shaping. I would say I worked more on my filing today, but I didn't show the process because I thought it was way too long and I was honestly really tired. I have usually film my videos always around midnight and I end up sleeping around 5 in the morning. Um, but here I went ahead and used some alcohol to remove the tacky layer from the poly gel and now I'm going in with my hand file and I'm filing my sidewalls first to go ahead and crisp up my sidewalls and I'm just going ahead and doing that. For example this one here you guys can see I had it very corroded so I did have to go ahead and you know file a lot on that side and I was able to achieve a very great um, sidewall at the end. So here I'm using this, I believe it's carbide or diamond, it's carbide. A carbide extra fine bit. I have no idea which bit this exactly is, but this is the bit that got gunked up so easily because the white still wasn't even cured even after curing for 15 minutes. So I did have to go ahead and cure that for like at least five more, and then you know I was able to work with it. But here I'm going ahead and trying to use this this bit that I got. It was a new bit, so I'm just trying out new bits and just stuff like that. If they don't work for me, then I toss them. And yeah, I did actually want to get the five in one bit, and I actually was the bit that I actually planned to order but instead I accidentally ordered the wrong one which is this one but I probably will be ordering the other kit even though the one that I currently use does the job perfectly fine um but yeah here I went ahead and showed you guys me doing that now next I'm going ahead and just sealing the critical area for the um clear one and this is where the, my bit got so gunk up like I said because my apologize had such a tacky layer I felt like it wasn't cured enough so I did have to go ahead and then cure again for five minutes like I mentioned earlier and here you guys can see all that white stuff on my bit it just got so gunked up super fast when I went in with that clear here I'm showing you guys and I'm putting my nail on there so you guys can kind of see just how disgusting that looks and that is also the same reason why I prefer using ceramic bits rather than carbide bits or diamond bits when using poly gel uh, but anyways I went ahead and switched in with to my extra fine ceramic safety bit this is great for beginners because you know it won't cut since it has a round end at the end and I'm also using this bit I believe I use that 8000 rpms to um, see the cuticle garden to remove any bulk but yeah I just went ahead and did that to the rest of the nails I'll be back when I need to explain something Oh, I guess it wasn't 
So once I'm done boiling, I'm going to go ahead and be using my dusting brush to go ahead and remove all that dust since we are going to go ahead and apply our top coat. And then I'm going ahead and then using my hand file again to just fix a little bit of minor filing on the pinky nail. And here's how my shaping and filing looks. I think I definitely fixed that middle nail. I don't know if you guys noticed, but that nail did come out a little corroded. It actually is corroded, but I tried my best to fix it. Um, here I'm going to go ahead and now top coat the nails using my top coat. Before I show you guys me doing that, this is how the nails look. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a closer look. And just admire that middle nail. I'm sorry I'm flipping you guys off. But look at it. it. Just It looks way better than what I showed you guys before on my application. You guys can see the underside. Super pretty. Now I'm going ahead and top coating each nail. Then I'm going to go ahead and then cure for 60 seconds. Also the clear is actually very clear. Just look at how clear that is. It didn't come out cloudy. Yeah, I really honestly like the clear. Just part of having to wait 20 minutes for it to cure was not it. But besides that, I think it definitely looks really cute. I really love this simple design and set. I did some short nails. As always, you guys asked me to do that. And as always, I did um, do that for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed these nails. I'm adding some kirikoyo and this is how they look. So here's how the nails turned out. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Did you guys love them? And would you guys wear this design? And let me know if you guys just found this video informative because as always, that's one of my main points of my channel is to, you know, help each other, help you guys, you know, learn a new poly gel technique since the beginning. Poly gel wasn't around as much when I first started YouTube. So I'm super excited to share all my tips and tricks with you guys. Um, I do have to look whisper because um, I'm babysitting, like I said, it's 12 in the morning and he just went to sleep. Um, so I don't want to wake him up. But yeah, let me know down below if you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for joining me. It means a lot to me for you guys to be supporting and watching my channel. So I do wear a peel-off base coat every single set that I do because I bring out a lot of nail content for you guys. And so here I want to go ahead and show you this satisfying part. And I hopefully you guys enjoy it as well as much as I do because this is probably one of my favorite parts after the set. But as always, thank you guys again so much for joining me today. And I'll see you guys on my next video. Goodbye.